Okay, in a previous video we showed how to replace the fuel filter as a complete unit. Um, also provided by Auto Parts Direct to you, we have a seal kit. Uh, so we're going to demonstrate how to replace the seal kit uh, in, in this filter housing here. Uh, just replacing the filter and the uh, O-ring kit. At the bottom of the uh, fuel filter housing, uh, we have the water level uh, sensor. Uh, so this is what's going to show us when uh, we have too much water in the system. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll unthread uh, the sensor out the bottom of the filter. Then we'll proceed by removing the filter from the housing. So that is, this is for our water level float at the very bottom here. That tells you if you have water inside your filter. So we'll go ahead and remove this one now. So we're going to have to pretty much hold it and then spin this filter off. We could probably do it by hand, but not now that I'm greasy. So we'll go ahead and go for the uh, channel locks again. And so that would be the fuel filter. This is the replaceable unit there. Okay, so now we have our primer ball and housing. Okay, so our kit from Auto Parts Direct U also comes with some instructions on how to do this too. We'll kind of float through this. We'll go ahead and go ahead and uh, we'll remove the uh, three screws here. Uh, the three there uh, T20 torques. We'll go ahead and remove those uh, three T20 torques. Okay, so our little components uh, that we got from Auto Parts Direct U comes with a couple screws. So we get all three new screws. We get a new bleeder. Uh, we have a couple O-rings and some seals here. So we'll get into all that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll replace the uh, bleeder first. All right, so then we want to go to our plunger. So we have our housing, and then we have a two-piece uh, plunger. We'll go ahead and pull this apart. So within this plunger, we have these two seals. We want to go ahead and replace these seals. So we're taking note on how this is. So we have cup going one way on the outer. All right, so here we have the first uh, seal pulled off. We definitely just want to make sure we know the open side upward on this one and the bottom one, the upper, it will be the opposite way. So we know this one was like this. Now we'll go ahead and remove this one. So how I remove these is I kind of just squeeze and I run my finger all the way up both sides, pinching it enough to get a gap to grab a hold of it. And then roll it over. You could use a screwdriver or something, but 
I try not to want to nick anything up, so just doing it by hand is fine. Let me just walk it over. I'll go ahead and walk it over again. All right, so there's our two. So we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll clean this up a little bit. All right, so now we can re reinstall our new uh, O-rings. Uh, so what we can do is, just to make it a little easier, uh, get them just a little diesel fuel on it to make it slide over. So remember, the bottom one, the cup faces downward. And then the upper, same thing, we'll lube it up. Facing upward. I'll make sure that they sit in and they seat well. And we're trying to roll that one around. There we go. All right. So then we have our, our cup that went back on. So go ahead and we have to kind of pinch it in there, making sure it doesn't roll. Let me kind of give it a little twist. All right, so now we have our sleeve over top. So we're going to go ahead and we'll reinstall it. We'll clean this up. So we have an O-ring here too we want to replace. We have one supplied with the kit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and reinstall. So once we tighten this down, it should be sitting. It actually, the white piece slips around the foot uh, like a little pedestal and it should seat back down on these landing pads right here. So we want to just go around, make sure that's what we were doing is shifting it. Uh, so we did them all a little at a time so we could push it down nice and easy so we know that we're, we're seating on all of our, our spots here. So now we have a working plunger. So we have a couple more O-rings we want to do on this side. Uh, so we want to go ahead and, oh, looks like we, we were so focused on getting that ring on, we forgot to put this. We'll go ahead and And so the torque on these should be about five or eight uh, inch pounds there, so it's not very much. All right, so we'll go ahead and we want to remove this connector here. We're just going to go ahead and pull it up. So we have two T20s on this back side. We'll go ahead and remove those two T20s. Then you can lift this piece out here. All right, so we had our little ball. We've seen the ball right there. It just fell out. So this ball sits just on the inside of that spot here on this side. So we have another, another O-ring. 
that we're going to be replacing. Which will be this one. And the other one is on the base of this, we have another O ring uh, sitting right on the base. I would say that O ring right there is very hard. Right, it has a square shape to it. I would believe that our leak was probably coming from the connector house right there. Not actually the plunger, but, but inside this piece here. That, that O-ring is, is very hard uh, and is shaped squared. It is not, uh, comes round. Uh, so we have our new O-ring and our new O-ring. I will go ahead and spray some uh, brake clean and clean it up a little bit. This would be our check ball here. That will go on the inside. Install our screws. And this is about the same, just a, about five or eight inch pounds of uh, torque on these ones. All right. Then we would hook our electrical connection back up. All right, so now we would be ready to go back to the vehicle with this one. Uh, you know, put our filter on, put back our water uh, sensor there, our, our float sensor, and we would be ready to uh, put this uh, back into service uh, with the rebuild kit.